Oh, uh, Blake Harrison, living in New Mexico now. Started caving in a uh, high school caving club. Started caving with uh, my friends using loop ropes and knots to get over and up and down pitches. Um, small club, s slightly organized, and probably 10 or 15 people. And we went uh, caving every month um, in the local caves. Not very entertaining in um, Central Texas at the time, but they were uh, something to do. And I uh, didn't know anything about mapping at the time, so it, that, that didn't happen. Just uh, dealing with local ranchers and owners and um, keeping us um, open to getting into different caves and things such as that. But uh, yeah, that was my beginning. And then um, and right after that, I went from um, that to a, a college caving uh, organization uh, in um, San Marcos, Texas. It was called the Southwest Texas Grotto. Some pretty active members in, in Mex southern Mexico at the time. And they, um, f for, for a while, that group was actually even more active than the University of Texas Grotto. But uh, that eventually changed. But uh, some of the guys there were doing some, some pretty active stuff in, um, in Mexico. Uh, I, I wasn't part of that, but, but they did. And eventually I did par participate. Um, we finally got the university club organized and uh, we were going down to Mexico every school break we could get. Uh, sometimes they were, uh, you know, well we'd go off on the weekends because it was only uh, 200 miles. We could go down and go to a, um, one of the wonderful commercial caves, Bustos de, Via, uh, no, Bustos de Bustamante, and uh, we could drive all night, wake up in the morning and camp at a wonderful campsite and go into this great, it was just a commercial cave, large walking passage, but uh, it was good memories and good group and, and then uh, we continued from there and doing other good um, local area caves. Finally, uh, on longer breaks we'd do um, trips into this uh, area around Sierra Vias and um, had some uh, wonderful experiences there. Uh, my, my one of my most uh, 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 honorable trips was get to go into the uh, cave that one of my friends found uh, was the, was the uh, Sotanita de Aguacatlan, and uh, the story I could put with that one was the, the, we first threw rocks in this little hole in the ground less than a meter in diameter, and uh, we tell there's a room below us, but that's all we knew, so we rigged that and realized it was only about. Uh, well, I don't remember, it was uh, less than 20 meters to the, the, the bottom of the first room. But in the back of that room there was a hole and uh, we the ground sloped down that so we threw some rocks in and couldn't really hear them hit the bottom. Anyway, uh, so at one point we decided to throw in some large rocks and uh, you know, we one, one almost uh, half a meter in diameter. Well, we shoved it over the edge and heard it rumble and rumble and rumble and never really ever heard it hit bottom, but it, you know, we rocks would rattle for you know 10 or 12, 15 seconds. Anyway, that story moved on to the fact we realized that we had an extremely deep, deep, uh, deep pit there, and needed to come back with a rope. And the, the group at that time only had a um, about a 300, well, a 100 meter rope, and so we put that rope in, and we uh, get, <laughs> I guess. I guess it was me that went down that rope and got to the bottom uh, the, in the rope with a knot in the end and realized we weren't quite to the bottom. And I was able to pull a rock off the side and drop it and it dropped quite a bit further. And so we realized that we needed to come back with a long, longer rope. So I think after that trip we um, returned to the States and came back with a, a 600 foot piece of rope. And uh, a friend of mine went down that and got to the bottom of that and still was not at the bottom. And so we, uh, I think I actually remained in Mexico at that time for this trip. And so the, uh, uh, the, the, the club was able to come up with a 1,200 foot, 1200 foot piece of gold line that uh, was brand new, fresh off the spool. And everyone knows gold, and gold line is uh, spinny and stretchy. Anyway, we uh, they a bit more I'm not remembering, but uh, they they came back and uh, 
had to get to the to the cave and get the the, the goal line in there. And um, anyway, we we put it in the, the cave and um, hoped that it it reached bottom. Anyway, I was down there with a, a good a dear friend Terry Rains, and so uh, he he allowed me to 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 go down first, and so I rappelled down and got to the bottom, and it, it, the, the 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 pit was quite narrow, probably more than four meters in diameter at the most, uh, almost the entire way down. Anyway, I didn't know how how deep it was at the time I rappelled, but I realized when I got to the bottom, there wasn't a whole lot of a rope left, but it was a pretty good sized knot uh, of the uh, the twisted gold line, which I, you know, what this is what it does when it can't unwind because it wasn't able to hang free. Anyway, and plus the amount of stretch, well, I was able to get off rope and, and um, holler back to the surface to tell them that I was off rope and, and um, that, that it was time for Terry to come down. Anyway, um, uh, I, again, the bottom was probably no more than oh, three or four, five, well, five, probably five meters in diameter at the, at the very most, uh, and it ended in a, in a, in a choke. Anyway, um, so finally, Terry comes down and uh, get, gets off rope, and we're at the bottom and realize, well, this is all that the, the cave does, so we had to start deciding to come out and, and um, survey and then head out. Anyway, my, one of my more mem memorable moments was, uh, and I being the, 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 the um, trainee in the group, uh, we were standing there and I guess because of the, 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 the condition of the cave, we, we heard, Terry and I were standing there and we, we heard the, the whoosh of a rock falling. Well, being that there was nowhere else to go, uh, I ran towards the wall, which I felt was the safest, of course. Uh, Terry, being the more experienced, uh, ended up under me, but uh, <laughs> that, that was the uh, best we could do. Well, fortunately, the rock, which wasn't large, even though it ended up falling about 600 feet, uh, didn't hit either one of us. Anyway, we were, were able to get out of the cave uh, safely and um, deal with uh, the goal line and the stretch. Oh, I, what I, I, I actually failed to mention when I got to the bottom, there was probably a, uh, oh, ooh, two to three meters of a, this amazingly twisted knot of goal line, which most so many cavers these days don't know what goal line is, but uh, somehow I was able to get off rope, and that was uh, rather... Uh, entertaining uh, just to get myself untangled and then deal with the 10% the stretch I think of that rope and uh, the pit ended up being over uh, 900 and over 900 feet so it was quite a bit of stretch uh, whatever that 300 meters or something but uh, it, it, it was a, quite an ordeal just to get off of rope and uh, deal with this, this uh, half a meter in diameter uh, a ball of twisted rope at the bottom. It was uh, fairly uh, entertaining, but somewhat scary because it, you, you, it was no place for the rope to untwist and, and to, to be able to, to um, release yourself. But uh, it, uh, it, that was one of my more memorable moments. But uh, anyway, there. So you were involved with the YouTube expeditions as well. Can you tell us how you get involved with those? Yes, I was ever ever so fortunate to, to uh, hook up with uh, the, the, the Canadian cavers and Michael Boone in particular, who would, uh, after driving 36 hours from uh, um, Canada, would uh, stop in Austin to resupply themselves or uh, take a break in, in Austin and get more gear and things. And uh, other cavers at the time were were uh, were uh, going down to the Sierra Valles area and some others areas such as that and finding some fantastic caves or pits at the time but uh, I, I was a bit more adventurous and so I uh, decided to, to hook up with the Canadian cavers, Michael Boone uh, included and uh, they were interested in some, some caves down in, in, the, in the state of Chiapas uh, and one of those being Sumadero Yochib and uh, oh, I'm not good on uh, the, when it was exactly found I, I think it shows up on the map as a, as a Sumadero or a, a, a river that sinks into the ground and so um, one of my trips, or early trips, was riding with Michael Boone and one of his, and uh, John Donovan and uh, uh, Brian Larson and some others. And uh, the vehicle that, that uh, uh, John Donovan had written, uh, had, had bought for uh, Boone, and uh, he nicknamed it Sweetums. And I won't ever forget because he, 
he, uh, I, I, it seemed like by the time he got to Austin that the battery in the vehicle might have worked, but by the time we got to, uh, for, well, uh, I think we had to push the car through customs or something because the battery didn't work. But uh, I, I, I won't forget having to camp right next to the highway uh, on our trip down because uh, he didn't couldn't couldn't afford a battery, nor could any of us. But uh, they had taken out the back seat. It was old Plymouth, uh, was the station way? I think it was a Dan. He was taking out the back seat, which I had to sit in. It was all, you know, where the seat was, was all full of rope. Uh, rope and, 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 and kit or gear, and uh, that, that was quite a memorable, memorable, memorable drive to the uh, area of, of the, uh, the Chiapas. And then uh, when we finally got into the, the, the city of uh, San Cristobal de Casas, we had to uh, get some connections in town with the local um, people that we knew about, and then uh, I think we were able to drive to the next town. Uh, but then from there we had to take either a bus or burros to the, town, the village of Yochib, and then uh, it was a, 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 a it was a full day hike it seemed like because it, I know we didn't have to camp on the trail I can't remember, but uh, anyway the, the, those were mem memorable hikes to haul up, pack up the burros and um, deal with them and try to get the right directions and we won't forget getting lost <laughs> anyway, but um, they they were pr pretty entertaining journeys with uh, Boone and crew and um, his Spanish was marginal and mine was even less and uh, we were able to finally get to the village of Yochib where it's like this this amazing uh, sumadero or a, a sinking river uh, went underground. Anyway, uh, and at, the, at the time it was a pretty small village and uh, lot, lots of locals that lived right at the surface, uh, not the surface, at the top of the Do Doline. Anyway, we, uh, we we camped at the top, but uh, uh, I was uh, with Michael and uh, Brian Larson and some other people in the in the early exploration of the cave. But uh, uh, the my more most memorable event in the in the, uh, the series of, of, of um, um, expeditions <laughs> that we had. Uh, were uh, the 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 the, you know, the the rescue that uh, uh, Michael's well known for. Uh, uh, we were it was some of the final exploration in the cave, and uh, it was um, uh, Gary Napper, Bill Steele, um, Michael Boone, and myself. And we were well, it was a bit longer story, which uh, I can't say. I'll come up with the best details, but uh, anyway, it uh, it was pr pretty uh, memorable. Because um, you know, we we had gotten within sight of the entrance, and the river was flood. The cave was flooding, and we um, had gotten to uh, a, a rock oh, barely a meter and a half in diameter, and there were four of us sitting on this rock. Uh, and when we first got there, it was probably uh, oh, you know, well, I'm mixing meters and feet, but uh, just a short distance out of the water. But uh, while we were sitting there, and we, we had some water passage to get past, just to get ourselves safe. Uh, we could just see the water coming up. Anyway, um, my, we needed someone to get to the next uh, safety rock to get across the river, and um, Mike, Michael attempted it once, and uh, he had a rope with him and didn't make it, and tried it again and made it the second time. And about the time that he finally got a, a rope tied and rigged, the, the rock that we were, we, three or four were sitting on was, was starting to, to be covered in water, and that was really our our last uh, last moments of uh, safety. Because uh, if we'd have been swept down, it was uh, possibly or more likely imminent uh, imminent death. I mean, there was a waterfall behind us, and uh, I, I don't remember the numbers, but uh, it, it was um, some a moment in caving that I, I won't forget. But um, and it, it, um, we were made it to safety, but uh, it was it was um, pretty exciting. Anyway, so, yeah, that was my my favorite Yochi moment. <laughs>